Uh, okay, uh, this is uh, general biology, Bio 131, uh, and we're still talking about the biodiversity, and this will be biodiversity three, which is animals. And um, we will be talking about a lot of things. This is not an easy chapter, but um, it, it has a lot of details about animals, uh, including uh, are these consume uh, these uh, they are consumers, not producers. And we'll start from the sponges and uh, uh, cnidarians and go all the way until we come to humans. Um, so the first thing is that we need to know is that animals are actually heterotrophs. Hetero means others. Trophs means feed on. So it feeds on others or feed from others. They do not produce their own foods. They eat something that's ready, meaning they cannot survive all by themselves, uh, including humans. Like, what are you going to eat if there is nothing else? Like no animals, no plants, no nothing. Can you make your own food like from sunlight or something? Of course not. You are a heterotroph. So animals, all of them are heterotrophs, meaning they obtain their foods from something else that's ready to use. So that's why they call the heterotrophs consumers. They consume, not producers. On the other hand, there are other types that are called autotrophs. Auto means self. Troves means uh, making food or, or, or feeding. So they make their own foods, like plants, for example. So, the, so plants are autotrophs and they are producers. So plants, animals feed on plants and we feed on both of them. Uh, but, but anyway, plants are the ones that are autotrophs or producers. These are the first ones. They have to be there first and then uh, as an autotrophs or as producers and then heterotrophs uh, will come later. So um, we are going to start from, the, from scratch, from the beginning, animals are heterotroph. Uh, they come basically from protests and we talked about the protests before and uh, the biologists say or said that the first animal was about 600 year, 600 million years ago. And it looks like this, which is like, looks like a protest coming from protest. And this was the first animal. Then we will go piece by piece from domains to, uh, to, uh, archaea, uh, to I mean, kingdom and so on. Uh, so domain bacteria, and then the domain archaea and eukarya divided, or um, this, this is like domain bacteria, and the other domain have some evolutionary changes or capabilities to give us the archaea, domain archaea and domain eukarya. Domain eukarya started from the protests which it itself is it's different kingdoms. So now we're talking about kingdoms. So domain, kingdom. I will show you that three later on. And then after the, uh, and then we have the kingdom uh, planty, which is the plants and then fungi. And then the king, kingdom um, animalia or animals. This will be the last one. Um, Animals in general, since we're talking in this chapter, talking about uh, animals, they have common features that's, in, in, um, that's common in, in these animals, like uh, they eat, all of them eat, they don't produce their foods, they have some sort of nervous system, it can be very primitive, can be very advanced, but they have a nervous system any, anyway, and, and their reproductive system, they have muscles, uh, they are all multicellular. It's not one cell, like, like protest can be multi, multicellular or unicellular. Bacteria are unicellular and so on. So it's, it's not unicellular. They have multiple cells. Um, and uh, they are eukaryotes and they have 
different types like the cell uh, of the eukaryotes have different types of organelles. We talked about those before, something that, like the nucleus, like uh, in the plasmic reticulum, like the mitochondria, like the Golgi apparatus, and so on. And in the nucleus, they all share uh, or have DNA inside. So here we start from uh, the ancestor animals. And I said before that uh, the biologist said that it was a protest that changed and become the first, uh, the ancestor animal. And then in the first thing that came is sponge. Sponge is the first thing um, evolved from the ancestor animals, which is coming from uh, uh, protest. So this sponge is very primitive. It does not have tissues. It does not have any body symmetry. They don't have symmetry, like right eye, left eye, right hand, left hand. This is symmetrical, right and left. So this is very primitive. And then evolution started, so they don't have body symmetry, and they don't even have tissues. Remember, tissues are made of cells. You have cell, one cell only, or if you put cells together, you're building a tissue. And if you put a tissues together, you're making an organ. Put organs together, you make an organ system. Put systems together to make a whole organism. Like if you look at your skin, if you look at your heart, uh, if you look at your digestive system, it's a system that have different organs. Stomach is an organ. If you take a piece of that, stomach and look at it, this is tissue. And, and if you look inside the tissues, you will see cells, but the cells already came together. So now this added an evolution of tissues and this will give us the first one, which adding an evolution of radial symmetry, like Nardinians. Nardinians, uh, uh, they have radial symmetry. Okay, so this was like no tissues, no body symmetry. Then evolution added just the symmetry, not the tissues. They have just uh, stinging cells. So it's not tissues, cells. But they have the radial symmetry. And these are the neuragians. And then another evolution added, which is the bilateral symmetry, including all of those. They have bilateral symmetry, uh, including flatworm, um, annioids, uh, and uh, molluscus. So all of these, or molluscus, all of these uh, have the, bi uh, the, the bilateral symmetry, uh, uh, like the, the flatworms have the bilateral symmetry, uh, uh, the annioids have segmented bodies, but still bilateral symmetry. Uh, the mollusks, uh, they have soft bodies and they usually have a hard shell, something like this. And so this is a group and then another evolution added um, like round worms and arthropods. Round worms are microscopic and uh, arthropods are, uh, they have joint appendages. Appendages is something that's appended like your upper limb is appended to the body and they have uh, joints in between different parts of this uh, appendage or appendages. And then the last one is echinoderms, uh, which have water vascular systems. So you're advancing more, not just tissues, not, not just uh, symmetry, but you're adding more and more. So here you're adding a water vascular system. Vascular system, like vessels that will carry uh, fluids, uh, and this will be um, uh, the echinoderms. And then the last one, the most advanced are the chordates. The chordates, they may have uh, a backbone, not necessarily, and this is our phy um, uh, phylum or phylum. We will see what phylum means. It, is, it goes, uh, 
in, in, in like a tree starting from life and going branching, branching, branching. Uh, we will talk about this. And we, we talked about it a little bit before. But um, chordates, most of them have backbones, not all of them, most of them. So what chordate means in the first place? Chordate means those that have cords, like nerve tissues in the form of long cords, like your spinal cord inside your vertebral column. This is, but this is a very sophisticated and very advanced cord. But anything that have a cord, even if it's very tiny, we call it chordate whether they have a backbone added to it to cover it and protect it or not, this is another thing. Most of them, they do. So we are humans came from the chordates. Uh, if you look at this, you don't really, you can't really tell if this is a plant or animal or a rock or something. But uh, if, if we actually started the classification that we see here, so we see the first ancestor, uh, ancestral animals, which came from the protest, and the least advanced or the very primitive one is sponge. No tissues, no body symmetry. So this is the first one that we're going to talk about, followed by the radians. And the radians are a little bit more advanced since they have the radial symmetry, but still no tissues. No tissues and no body symmetry in the sponge, no tissue, but there is the body cement. Uh, I, I mean, um, uh, it's, the cells are coming together and they are like stinging cells, but they have the radial symmetry. And then anything else will have the bilateral uh, symmetry, not just radial symmetry. Um, so here we have the sponge. They do not have the body symmetry. They do not have tissues. The radians, they have radial symmetry, not bilateral symmetry, but they do have some tissues and stinging cells. They have some tissues and stinging cells because here we have the tissues evolved. So this first one, uh, which is the sponge, no tissues, no body symmetry. And then the tissues started, tissues started. And after the tissues, it can be radial symmetry or bilateral symmetry. Radial sim bilateral means like right, left. They are both similar. Radial symmetry, meaning the cells are um, uh, have some symmetry. Like st they have stinging uh, cells, they have some tissues, pr primitive, but they do have radial symmetry. But everything else after this second one, which is in the radians, anything else beside the tissues, they have the bilateral symmetry, right, left, starting from here, going all the way down, and we will take it one by one. So sponges are the most, uh, the least advanced ones, no body symmetry, no tissues. And then the radiance is more advanced because again, this is when you added the tissues, so do they have tissues and radial symmetry, not bilateral. Anything else will have the bilateral symmetry. So in the radians, they do have symmetry, but it's, radi it's, it's radial symmetry, and they have a little bit of primitive tissues and stinging cells. So sponge are uh, the longest evolutionary history of all animals. This is the very first, uh, the, the ones that stayed for a long time before others. Uh, had some evolutionary, ad addition, evolutionary additions. And as I mentioned before, they don't have tissues, they, have, uh, they don't have symmet any symmetry, uh, whether it is radial or bilateral. And at the same time, they are sessile. Sessile or sessility means immovable. They don't even move, these sponges. So like this, no tissues, no symmetry, and they don't even move. So since you don't have tissues, what, what do they have then? They have cells. And every single cell needs to get in contact with the environment. Because if, if there is a tissue that's gathering all these cells together, when something comes, it will be distributed. But in this case, you don't even have tissues. So every one of these cells, they need to have their own, their own contact with the environment.
And here are the different examples of sponge. Uh, the one that was in the example is a freshwater sponge. It, uh, is that an animal? Is it a plant? Is that a rock? It is a primitive, very primitive animal, like freshwater sponge. It is also the branching vase or vase sponge. A pink elephant ear sponge looks like the elephant ear that's pink in color and so on. Uh, the second one is Neradians. Neradians includes uh, the sea animons, the hydras, the corals, the jellies, and so on. Uh, what's, what is um, in common between those? What's Neradians in the first place means it is stingy. It can stench, can stench you. Uh, now we have, we added the radial symmetry and we have the tissues, but we still have stinging cells, cells that have this ability to stench. Uh, and this can be two distinct body forms. It can be in the form of polyps like this, and uh, it can be in the form of uh, uh, medosa like this. Uh, and this one is like uh, uh, the C uh, animon. C animon is an example of the one that have these polyps. And the floating medosa looks like medosa like this. They are floating. But uh, the, the example of that is jelly. So we have two different types. And these are different types of neradians. And we discussed what's in common between all these neradians. This is an example here, a sea wasp. Uh, this is the sea animon, Caribbean sea animon. Uh, this is the hydra the gray hydra. Uh, this is the boulder brain coral. It's a coral that looks like a brain. Look at this. If you look at the brain and compare it, kind of looks like it. They do not give like random names or something. Uh, so um, here are different uh, questions about the neuragians that we talked about. Uh, and we will um, move to the next part, which is, so we did the, the sponge, the radians, and then we will add another evolutionary adaptation, which is bilateral symmetry. Unlike the neradians, which, which does not have the bilateral symmetry, it have radial symmetry. Uh, I just added this picture to the slides, uh, just to show you how we go one by one, we have life, that contains several domains, like the domains that I showed you before, like bacteria, and then the, the next domain will be archaea and eukarya and so on. And then you will go to kingdoms, kingdoms. Uh, and then from kingdoms, each kingdom will have different uh, phylums or phylums. And then you go to class and each class will have orders and then have families and then have genies and then have the last one is species. You actually do need to, to know this sequence. Um, you can see it in, um, in, in the exam or something. So start with the whole life that have different domains. And we talked about the domains, bacteria, and then the next one is archaea and eukarya. And then from those domains, you will have different kingdoms. Each kingdom, like animal kingdom, plant kingdom, and so on. And then under the kingdom, from animal kingdom, for example, you have the phylum. The phylum. Uh, and then you have classes, and then you have orders, and then you have families, genus, and species. Uh, so here we have the next ones that have the bilateral symmetry, and they do have tissues as well. Something like the flatworms, uh, the annelids, uh, the mollusks, and uh, all the, th the three have the same adaptation. And then the round worms and the arthropods, they have different adaptation until we go to the, um, the echinoderms and uh, the chordates from which uh, we belong to. So um, here are the flatworms. Here are the annelids. Together with the round worms, which is in another category, but all together, they have the body shape, the same body shape, or very, uh, not the same, it's very similar body shape, 
but uh, they have differences that we will talk about. So each of these phylums or phylums will have its own ev evolutionary heritage and will have its own uh, features. Uh, so start with the flatworms. You look at the flatworms, obviously it's a worm that looks flat. And obviously everything after the first two have bilateral symmetry, so it goes without saying, but you will add here the, the gastrovascular cavity. We have a cavity for gastrovascular. Gastro is like stomach for digestion. Vascular means vessels. It's just very primitive, contain those two only. But no actual body cavity, like animals and humans, they have an actual body cavity, like this body cavity, part of it is the chest, part of it is the abdomen, the pelvis. And if you look inside, the, the, the chest is pleural cavity, another pleural cavity, and in the middle, in the middle, we have the mediastinal cavity that have the heart, and all, all of these. This is the whole body cavity. This is very primitive, just a very tiny cavity that have a part of it for uh, like gastro, which is the stomach, and the other part is vascular, uh, which is like vessels, like arteries and veins. It's not really, it's just the primitive vessels. You all, they also have eye spots, like look at this. It's not a big eye, it's very tiny eye, like, like looks like a spot. And they have their own six, uh, sex organs. Some of them are parasites. Parasites means they live uh, on other things, but like they can live in our body and uh, they uh, abuse our bodies by taking like our nutrients. Some of them can, can feed on our blood and so on. So these are parasites and some of them, they just live like in the water or something. Here are example of the flat uh, worms. Uh, the tapeworms is one of them looks like a tape and this can actually live uh, if you drink or eat, uh, it's more of eat uh, types of uh, animals, uh, something like pigs or something like that, they might have this or other types, they can, they can have that. And if you eat it, it will stay inside our body uh, to be as a, a parasite. Uh, so here is one example. The other example is the leopards, flatworm. It looks like a leopard, but it's a flatworm. Uh, the annulets, what is uh, the, uh, the evolutionary adaptation that's added to it? It's segmentations. They have different segments, body segments like these. Each segment is doing something. Um, here they have the mouth, they have the heart, they have the circulatory system, but it's closed like ours. Our circulatory system is start from the heart, go like branching, branching, branching until it come back all the way. This is closed, like, like just from here to here. Uh, and they have the, the, like, uh, the anus at the end. So mouse on one side and anus on the other side. And they have these body segments and they also have complete digestive system. Unlike the, the previous one, it's just a small cavity that contain, which is the gastrovascular, just part of it is for digestion, and part of it is for vascular, but here the vascular is by itself and the digestive is by itself. So it's more advanced because of the segmentation. So they do have bilateral symmetry and this goes without saying, but this one have the complete digestive tract. Uh, the annulets have complete digestive tract and closed circulatory system, unlike the previous one. They have a body cavity, not unlike the other one, which is incomplete, Plus they have the segmentation, which is one of the evolutionary adaptations. Here are examples of annelids that share all these criteria. The polychaetes, uh, the leech, the earthworm. The earthworm is uh, a lot of people use it for fishing. Uh, so all of these are considered uh, under this uh, phylum or phylum of annelids and they share all these criteria that we talked about. Uh, next is roundworms, or also known as nematodes. These are more of cylindrical bodies. Remember the flatworms, it was flat like this. This is cylindrical shaped. It's tapered from both sides. 
look at this picture here. This is cylindrical shaped, like these two, cylindrical shaped, and one end and the other end are both tapered. Of course, bilateral symmetry, remember, you don't have to memorize this. Remember, starting from here, this one, the sponge, no tissues, no symmetry. Now, radians, they have radial symmetry. Anything else will have bilateral symmetry, so it goes without saying. We don't have to repeat. Uh, but here it is, bilateral symmetry. They have complete digestive system, but they don't have segments. Um, so we're, since we're talking about animals, uh, what's zoology? Uh, zoology, zoology is coming from zoo, Z-O-O, Z-O-O coming from zoo, which is animal. Ology or olex means studying. So zoology is studying of animals. Next one, after we did four, is uh, the mollusks. And mollusks is uh, uh, itself a uh, phylum uh, or phylum or phylum. Uh, and they have soft body, but they usually have a, sh a hard shell. Soft body, hard, hard shell. They usually hide inside the shell, but if you get that part out, it's very soft. Snails, slugs, oysters, uh, clams, octopus, uh, squids, all of these, belong to mollusks. And again, mollusks means they have soft bodies. All of them have soft bodies. Most of them are covered by a hard shell. So all of these um, count under mollusks, which is the soft, the, the animals that have soft body, and most of them have a hard shell. Snails, slugs, oysters, clams, uh, octopus, uh, squids, all of these are mollusks. Mollusks, of course, the first one always goes without saying bilateral symmetry, as long as it's not from the first two. Uh, and they have three parts, the muscular foot, visceral mass, and the mantle. Mantle means cover, cover-like. Their circulatory system is open, unlike the previous one, which was closed. And most of them have the external shell, the, the hard part. And they usually have, most of them have gills. Uh, it's, this is like something similar to the respiratory organs, uh, but it's very primitive. And they also have the radula. Radula is teeth-like. Um, radula. File is a teeth-like organ. They have teeth-like, so they have all of these. Bilateral symmetry goes without saying. Uh, they have muscular foot. All of these have muscular mollusks. They all have muscular foot. They all have visceral mass. They all have mantle, uh, which is cover. Whether this cover is an external shell that's, that's hard or not, most likely hard or not, but they have a mantle anyway. The circulatory system is open. They have an external shell, most of them. Most of them have gills for respiration. And most of them have regula, which is teeth-like organs. So he, here are different types of these uh, mollusks, like uh, gastropods. Gastro means, gastro is a prefix. It means stomach. Pods means legs. This is this they have digestive system or uh, something like a stomach and legs, like snails and slugs belong to the gastropods. Uh, something like the banana slugs looks like this. This looks like a banana, but it's actually a slug, which is a kind of gastropods. Uh, the the next type uh, is like uh, the bivalve, since it has two valves with hard hard um, shells. Uh, and under this, you have the clams, the, uh, the mussels, the oysters, uh, the scallop. Uh, all of these have the, the bivalve. So when you see something uh, like a lot of the uh, things that we eat, if it have this two valves or two segments, two shells, 
two valves, by valve, by means two. So um, clams belong to that, mussels belongs to that, oyster and scallop, all of these uh, belong to the by valves. Uh, so when you see this, know that this is by valve and it, it contain all these four under this category, which is a by valve. Cephalopods, on the other hand, cephalo is a prefix that means head. Pods means uh, like podium. Podium is something that you put your foot on. So pods, cephalopods, they have heads and they have uh, legs. Squid and octopus or octopi uh, belong to this category of cephalopods. Head, they have head, they have uh, pods or uh, legs or have heads and tails, okay? Cephalopods, head and tail. Uh, pods usually uh, tail in the form of legs or limbs. Uh, remember that animals have bilateral symmetry, so it goes without saying, except in the radians that have radial symmetry. And of course, sponge didn't count in the first place because it's not even symmetrical at all. So what symmetry means mirrored halves, like the right side looks like a mirror image of the left side. Even the brain, if you look at the brain, the right half looks like the left half. Right eye looks like the left eye. So if you cut like this, like uh, if you cut any one of these animals exactly in the middle like this, and you have two halves, they are bilaterally symmetrical. If you have any one of those, and cut it that have heads and tails, cut it, or, or the, those that have bilateral symmetry, cut it into two pieces, you will have two, two halves. The two halves looks exactly the same, symmetry, symmetrical. Um, after that, we will have the arthropods. Um, arthropods are considered the most successful animal phylum or phylum. Most successful means they can easily live. They can use uh, uh, whatever is available for them. Numbers are huge. They can survive and outnumber anything else. This is the most numerous and diverse phylum of animals. Like if you if you get compare them to any other animals, no, whatever it is, it's arthropods. That's the most numerous ones. Uh, you don't see them as much, probably. You can see cats and dogs and everything else, but it's not even a comparison. It's numerous. It's the most diversified, have huge uh, different types. Um, so the, uh, we can, arthropods, we can group them into different groups, including the, um, the, arach the arachnids, uh, the arachnids uh, like spiders. Um, arachnids, arachnids in general, or arach, arachn means uh, the, the one that have many branches. Uh, like spiders belong to the arachnids. Uh, the centipedes and millipedes. Uh, centi and meli is a number of pids, and pids means uh, uh, legs, like pedal. You know, when you press on the pedals, where's the what's the pedal? Pedal is coming from ped, p e g, and this means foot. Uh, so depending on the number of foot, centipedes and uh, and millipedes. Uh, the next one is crustaceans. Crustaceans means the ones that have crust. And crust means hard cover, like the lobsters. Lobsters, you need to remove this hard cover to eat it because it have a crust. The last one is insects, including the butterflies. It's just an example. They are very diversified, like so many different types but they have features in common of all these types. Of course, bilateral symmetry is one. 
they all have body segments. What's the body segment? This segment do something, this segment do, does something else and so on. So if they have head, this is the segment that contain like something similar to the brain or the nervous system, thorax, which contain like a respiratory system, abdomen, which contain like digestive system, reproductive system, um, urinary system and, and so on. And they all share that they have a hard exoskeleton. Exo means external. Skeleton, skeleton, like the bone or the hard part. So this is what they all share. Here are the body segments. Uh, like they have the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen. These are the different segments. Look at the external part. This is an exoskeleton. What's the endoskeleton then? Endo means internal skeleton, like ours. It's an internal skeleton. Like outside here is muscles and skin and everything. And your skeleton is inside, endoskeleton. These have a skeleton that's more outside, external, exoskeleton, hard exoskeleton. That's what, what's in common, but it's huge, uh, di diversified different types. And um, but they share these uh, criteria or characteristics between them. Arachnids uh, means they have eight legs, and this is where the name came from. The arthropods that have uh, arachn is like branches, a lot of branches, but arachn means eight. It's coming from a prefix arachn, which is eight. And under the arachnoids, uh, this type is uh, spiders. Scorpions, ticks, and mites. So remember, all these types are all uh, arachnids. Uh, and most of these are terrestrials, uh, um, uh, carnivores. Terrestrials means they live on Earth, not uh, in the water, which will be aquatic. Uh, carnivores means they eat meats. So here is a scorpion. This is the tick. Um, this is the crab, horseshoe crab, and so on. All different types of uh, arachnids. Um, crustaceans. This is another type of arthropods. Uh, arthro means a lot. Arthropods. This is the next type of arthropods. And it's, it's crustaceans. Crustaceans, again, that have crust or hard cover. Uh, a lot of these uh, are used for uh, food, the seafood that we eat, uh, contain some of, um, a lot of these crustaceans. So crustaceans, a lot of them, uh, we eat them. Like shrimp, lobster, crabs, and all these things that have the hard, anything that the seafood that have this hard cover is called crustaceans. Here is an example, uh, the brown crab. Um, barnacles is another type, the goose-necked barnacles. Uh, so these are types. Uh, another thing, of course, this is not for eating, uh, like the wood louse. They also, crustaceans, they have this hard cover that you see here. And of course, other than that, they share everything else that we talked about. They are segments, they have heads, they have um, chest and uh, or thorax, and they have the abdomen, head, thorax, abdomen. They share all of that. But this type of, uh, this is generally speaking in arthropods, but this type of arthropod that's crustaceans, they have the crust or the hard shell. Next is insects, another type of uh, arthropods and insects is num their numbers is huge more than what you can think it outnumber all animals put get all the animals together insects is even more since they are types of arthropods they have the regular segments head thorax and abdomen uh, but what's in common beside that which is in any other arthropod but they have three pairs 
of legs and one pair of antenna. Here is one, two, three pairs of legs and they have a pair of antenna. This is what they share together. Of course, um, more kinds of insects live in Earth more, more than any kind of animals. Yes, even more than that. It's, it outnumber all animals combined. Um, echinoderms or echinoderms, uh, here, these are the sister phylum of uh, chordates, and the chordates are the ones that have the cords. We are considered in biology, whether you agree or not, but this is just biology, we are considered part of uh, the chordates. Um, so they, they come together having uh, a lot of similar evolutionary uh, characteristics or adaptations. So echinoderms, uh, they have uh, or they share the evolutionary branches with uh, the chordates from, from which we came. Chordates, most of them are vertebrates, not all of them. And we came from these vertebrates. Um, but, uh, but but the, 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 the thing about these uh, echinoderms or echinoderms is they are all marines, not terrestrials. Marines. Uh, so marines means they live in the water, not terrestrials. Uh, what are the members of these echinoderms? Sea stars, like this looks like a star that lives in the sea. Sea arshans, sea cucumbers, and sand dollars. These are different types of uh, echinoderms. Here is the first one. Again, it's closely related. It's a phylum that's of the phylum that's closely related to our own. We are part of the vertebrate, which is the vast majority uh, of the chordates which is the next one, we will discuss it. So echinoderms and then the chordates. Uh, what are the characteristics of uh, echinoderms? Bilateral symmetry obviously goes without saying, but this is in the larva, mainly in the larva. Adults will have radial symmetry. This is something unique here, but the larva is the one that have the bilateral symmetry. They have the water vascular system, they have tube feet. Their feet looks like a tube. They have vascular system. Their skeleton is endoskeletons, endoskeletons. Unlike, unlike the other types that we already discussed, it was exoskeletons. Remember the arthropods, exoskeletons, exo, external. This is endo, internal. They also have, uh, with these echinoderms, they have spiny surface, if you touch, can uh, hurt you because they have spines, it might, if it is uh, hard enough. Uh, their, their feet is tube feet, they have a mouth, and they can actually regenerate, means if, if they lose part of it, they can remake it. And here are different types of um, uh, echinoderms, like these arshins, uh, and these uh, brittle stars, looks like a star that can break down. That's where the name came from. Uh, this is the feather or feather star. And, and this is chocolate chip, sea cucumber. It looks like a cucumber, but have these patches. Looks like chocolate chip. So we do share uh, evolutionary kinship with these echinoderms. Even though they have nothing to do with us in the shape, but we share some of the uh, of the evolutions, uh, especially when it comes to the embryo, how the embryo developed. So this is something in common as an uh, evolutionary adaptation. Um, so um, we are going to stop here. Um, and this, this was uh, first part of chapter 10.